What effect does bullet jump have on the precision of your ammo? Well, that's the question that we're going to be answering on this episode of Extreme Reloading. Bullet jump, or freeboard distance, is the distance that that bullet travels between the time that the bullet leaves the mouth of the case until it impacts the lands of the rifling. Now there are some folks who say that that distance must be kept as small as possible because if you don't do that, then a bullet that is not properly aligned with the lands of the rifling will never be corrected and it will not uh, result in an accurate point of impact or precise point of impact downrange. There are others who argue that that distance doesn't matter that much, especially if you're using bullets with a secant ogive design because the lead area of the rifling is designed to self-correct the bullet to ensure a nice, precise round downrange. In my experience, the only bullet that really seemed to prefer or perform better as I pulled the bullet further and further, further out or affected a longer combined overall length and thus a shorter jump was my 220 Swift. It seemed like the further I could get that bullet out uh, and the closer I could get it to the lands, the better it shot and the more precise, I should say, that it shot. In some other cases, you might notice that I have done a lot of work with extreme reloading and the Ruger Precision Rifle. In the case of that rifle, I'm really limited by the size of the magazine or the size allowed by the magazine. And so if I want to use the magazine with the rifle, and I certainly do want to do that, then there's no way that I can get my um, bullet really close to those lands. In fact, I have a gigantic jump. Some folks have said it's not just a jump, it's a hop, skip, and a jump. So. I'm not going to be using my Ruger Precision Rifle for this test. What I'm going to be using is my Ruger Number 1. It's a single shot rifle and that is one of the giant advantages of a single shot rifle. I can really play and experiment with the combined overall length of my cartridges and affect an excellent amount of jump. To measure the freeboard distance, or jump, we're going to need a couple of tools. One is the Hornady overall length gauge, and since this is a 243 Winchester, Ruger number one, we're going to need a Hornady modified case to fit that overall length gauge, and it's modified because it has threading on the head go ahead and thread this onto the overall length gauge, right like that. Snug it up. And now this portion right here, this cutaway, is designed to allow us to fit the caliper jaws on this side and of course the other end of the caliper jaws here uh, where the bullet is going to be. And we, of course, want the bullet, the same type of bullet that we're going to be shooting uh, in this rifle. Not a generic bullet, but ideally the uh, rifle that we're working up a load for. Now, I have worked up the load for this rifle using this bullet. This rifle shoots this bullet very, very well. Uh, but I'm going to experiment, of course, with uh, the effect of bullet seating depth or the distance of the bullet from the lands. Next step then is to insert this bullet into the case and one other modification that has been made to this case is that the neck is actually 
uh, slightly larger than normal to be, allow us to, to fit this bullet in so easily. And now we're simply going to insert this into the chamber. Now the thumb screw right over here on the far left of the screen, we're going to loosen this up a bit and this will allow us to push this plunger into, and now I have made contact with the base of the bullet. We're going to now move it forward until we feel that the bullet has made contact with the lands. We'll then lock it up. That's an important step and pull it out. Now sometimes this bullet will lodge inside the chamber of the rifle or actually because it has made contact with the um, with the lands it'll sometimes stay in there. That's not the end of the world. Just put a cleaning rod down the bore and push it back out. And then if that happens you just reinsert it into the mouth of this modified case. And because we tightened up this thumb screw, uh, you're going to still get the same measurement. Okay, now let's get our measurement. Of course, we're going to start with a zeroed caliper. Again, we're going to place this in this cutaway right there. We want to make sure we're squared up. 2.768. Now that's just a single measurement and I don't feel too confident that that is um, going to be the absolute right answer. So I'm going to set this up once again. I have loosened up the thumb screw. I'm going to repeat the process. We'll do this a couple of times. And what we should start seeing is a good repeatability in our test or in our measurements. Now that one's stuck in there, so I will go ahead and get this thing pulled out and we'll make the measurement. Two point eight zero four. We need to make another measurement. One more time. I'm going to go ahead and do this ten times. We should be able to get a pretty good measurement that way. Two point eight zero four. Now an alternative to measuring combined overall length like I'm doing right now is to use the Hornady bullet comparator. Now the reason why I'm thinking that is a better approach is because on these open tip match type bullets uh, they oftentimes have a irregular meplat making repeatable measurements kind of difficult especially if we're going to do a test with a couple different bullets. So if we use the bullet comparator we're going to be essentially measuring from the point where the bullet achieves bore diameter regardless of the length beyond that point. And if you think about it, that actually is a smarter approach because this point is where the bullet makes contact with the lands and so then it's a little bit better way of measuring these bullets. So now instead of uh, achieving a measurement of 2.804 of an inch, we're going to have a different measurement of 2.293. So if we start working two one hundredths off of that measurement, it's very likely that I think we'll see more consistent results at the range. After making quite a number of these measurements, I started to consistently get 2.804 as the maximum combined overall length. Now we don't want to load a bullet um, or load our round to that absolute maximum combined overall length. That's not going to be good. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that number and subtract two hundredths from it. That's going to be the largest or longest round that we're going to uh, load. And I'm going to go ahead and load five of those rounds at that distance, which is a combined overall length of 2.784 inches. Then I'm going to decrement the combined overall length by three thousandths of an inch to load two more five-shot groups. And finally, I'm going to load one more group, five-shot group, where the combined overall length is equal to the combined overall length I'm currently using. Now this combined overall length I'm currently using for these Lapua Skinner L bullets, 90 grain bullets, is only 2.664 of an inch. Now that is actually quite a distance away from the maximum combined overall length. And I've experimented with this a little bit in the past, but this gives me a nice sub MOA group. In fact, the last time I shot this group, just about a month ago, I got a 0.67 MOA group. And the brass that I'm going to be using today is some Federal Champion brass that I have very carefully prepared and sorted. This particular uh, group of brass varies by only a tenth of a grain in its weight. Uh, the length is the same and it has been annealed. I have a number of these cases ready to go for these four different groups. So I'm going to be loading these with Match Primers and Hodgdon's 4350 Extreme Powder and then of course topping them off with these uh, Lapua Skinner L bullets. Well, I finally got all those rounds loaded and they are strikingly different from shortest combined overall length to longest combined overall length. Same bullet, 90 grain Lapua Skinner L. Now, when I was loading these or seeding these bullets, I followed up by actually measuring the true um, combined overall length. And I'm actually making that measurement using the Hornady comparator to get a, a measurement from the base uh, of this um, finished round or from the head to the ogive. And um, I didn't really get what I expected or what I wanted to get in all cases. For instance, that shortest combined overall length that we were just looking at should have given me a combined overall length measuring from the head to the ogive of 2.153 inches. Well, what I got was consistent, but it was 2.146 inches. And I checked that against, you know, my other loads that I've been doing because I've been shooting this setup for quite a while, and that's what I've been getting. So that's okay, and I've got five rounds at exactly that uh, overall length. Then let's go all the way to the longest round that I'm loading, or longest set of rounds that I'm loading. And this is a uh, set of five rounds again, where the bullet is seated two hundredths of an inch off the lands. And when I go with the uh, measurement again from the head or base of that cartridge to that ogive, that length should be 2.273 of an inch. Now what I got was 2.272, not bad, I'm only off by a thousandth, I like that, but only for three of the rounds. The other two rounds I have point, uh, 2.266 and 2.268. So I've separated those off. I'll still have five rounds to fire, but I'm going to be very, very careful to fire those three rounds that have the overall length that I want and are very consistent at that, then I'm going to shoot the other two separately. And because I always put my remote camera on that downrange target, I'll be able to see if, and this would be a neat little side experiment, if that slight difference in bullet jump actually makes much of a difference at all uh, in the uh, bullet impact on that target. So that's kind of a bonus 
a uh, little side experiment we're going to do. The disadvantage, of course, is now I only have three rounds to use to really test this, uh, this bullet jump. And now, again, this was where the bullet is going to be, or is placed, at two hundredths off of the lands. Then what I'm doing is I'm stepping it away from the lands, another three thousandths. And what I have here is a uh, expected combined overall length of 2.270, but that's not what I got. I got 2.268 for three rounds, and, uh, and then it kind of it, cha it changes. I have a minimum of 2.267 all the way to 2.269. So those variable ones again have been set aside. Uh, I'm going to shoot the three uniform rounds as one group and then we'll follow up with the two variable rounds and again see if that makes much of a difference anyway. The last group that I have loaded, another five rounds, again stepping in another three thousandths off of the lands, so another three thousandths off of the lands, uh, and that should have had, ideally, a combined overall length of 2.267, but what did I get? I got 2.262 for three of the rounds, um, and I got 2.265 for another round, and 2.261 uh, for yet another round. So again, three good ones right in there for the test, the other two kind of this side test. So we're going to end up firing four different groups. I'm going to fire these from 100 yards. There's essentially should be no user error or shooter error involved at that distance. Once again, I'll be using that Ruger number one single shot rifle in 243 Winchester. And uh, we're going to see what effect bullet jump has on the accuracy or rather precision of these rounds. And as it turns out, we're also going to be able to see how much of an effect a little bit of variability in bullet seating depth makes on the um, precision of these rounds. That's all coming up in the next episode of Extreme Reloading. I hope you'll join in and see how all this is going to play out.